The magazine Physics World once conducted a survey asking its readers what they considered the most beautiful of all experiments. From the results, a roster was compiled of the top 10, all predictably within the realm of physics. But what, I wondered, if one were to cast the net wider? I decided to make my own list. The question was where to begin. With Thales rubbing amber to create static electricity, that lacked the kind of elegance I was looking for. There were no controls, no systematic attempt to see what materials, under what conditions, could be charged this way. As Gilbert went on to show, there was nothing unique about amber. With Thales, experimental science had not yet begun. How about Pythagoras, another of the pre-Socratics, who discovered that the musical notes sounded by a plucked string correspond to precise mathematical ratios? If the whole string sounds a perfect C, three-fourths of the string will sound an F and two-thirds a G. Pinch the string in half, and it will sound a C again, an octave higher. All is number, Pythagoras declared, another grand unified theory. He should have stopped while he was ahead. Fire, he went on to speculate, is made of 24 right-angle triangles surrounded by four equilaterals, which are made in turn of six triangles. Air is composed of 48 triangles, water of 120. Experiment gave way to mysticism. Another candidate might have been Archimedes. The dubious legend about his jumping from a bathtub shouting, Eureka, having discovered the physical law of buoyancy, trivializes the grandeur of his accomplishment. His treatise, On Floating Bodies, is considered a masterpiece of mathematical reasoning, and not just because of its derivation of Archimedes' principle. A body submerged in a fluid is acted upon by an upward force equal in magnitude to the weight of the fluid displaced. He also figured out, from first principles, how a cone-shaped object called a paraboloid would float if immersed in water. Icebergs are roughly paraboloid and behave pretty much as Archimedes said. His greatness, however, lay more in reasoning than in experiment. Another great theorist. What I was looking for were those rare moments when, using the materials at hand, a curious soul figured out a way to pose a question to the universe and persisted until it replied. Ideally, the apparatus itself would be a thing of beauty, with polished wood, brass, shining black ebonite. More important would be the beauty of the design and the execution, the cleanness of the lines of thought. For that, I had to jump from ancient Greece all the way to the 17th century, when a man named Galileo coaxed out a fundamental law of motion. From there, I proceeded step by step, visiting nine more stops on the scientific trail, eventually meeting up again with Millikan and his tiny stars. Likelier than not, anyone who hears this program could come up with a different list. Shouldn't you just call it 10 Beautiful Experiments? A friend objected. Probably so. But I hope there is art in the arbitrariness, both in my selection of the experiments and in what I have chosen to tell about each one. This is not a program about great discoveries, the serendipitous surprises like Galileo's spying of satellites circling Jupiter or Charles Darwin's observations about finches. Those were not the kind of deliberate, controlled interrogations of reality that I wanted to explore. Nor is this intended as a collection of miniature scientific biographies. There are already plenty of good ones. Some lives, like those of Antoine Laurent Lavoisier and Albert Michelson, diverted me with their strange details. Others, like Galileo's and Newton's, have been told too many times before. I've tried to sketch each scientist with a charcoal wash. I want the experiment, not the experimenter, to be the protagonist. To keep the stories as crisp as possible, I've spent little ink trying to parcel out credits, fighting the historian's fights. James Jewell's surprising discovery about energy and heat was anticipated by Robert Mayer, but it was Jewell who did the beautiful experiment. I like what Lord Kelvin had to say about that. Questions of personal priority, however interesting they may be to the persons concerned, sink into insignificance in the prospect of any gain of deeper insight into the secrets of nature. <laughs>